Greetings, everyone. Welcome to Church at Home. Church at Home is sponsored by the Christian Biblical Church of God and is dedicated to restoring original Christianity for today. What are the true values of God, not values of a society? You see, the society has come to a point that they have taken to themselves to decide right and wrong, good and evil. Some of them have incorporated some of the things that they find in the Word of God. Some of them are trying to do good. Even some preachers are trying to preach what is true. But you see, the whole thing comes down to if you decide what is right and wrong and good and evil for yourself, and you reject the Bible or parts of the Bible, then you're doing your own thing. You're establishing your own righteousness, and your own righteousness is going to lead to evil. And that's what has happened here in America and in the world. Now, this world is obsessed with sex, and every civilization down through time always comes to that point. And God has to judge. All you have to do is just look at all empires of the past. And remember this. Empires fall when they reach their height. And one of the sins that they have is that they have sex sins and violence and murder that come along with it. And we will see from the Word of God that that is because they were given over to a spirit of whoredoms or, as we could say, obsessed with sex. Now let's come to the book of Hosea, chapter 4, and let's see how God describes this nation today. And we are the modern descendants of the supposedly lost ten tribes of Israel, which when you understand history, were never really lost. Hosea 4. Here's a prophecy of exactly what is going on today. And many times these prophecies say, in the latter days you will understand them. Verse 1, Hosea 4. Hear the word of the Lord, children of Israel, for the Lord has a controversy with the inhabitants of the land. Now listen to what he says. Listen to what God's complaint is. There is no truth, nor mercy, nor knowledge of God in the land. Isn't that true today? Oh, we're a secular society. We're diverse. Oh, we have to give expression to all religions and all thoughts and all opinions. And that's because they don't have the standard of God. Notice what it leads to. By swearing and lying and killing and stealing and committing adultery, they break out and blood touches blood. Well, what does this do to the land? Oh, we think, oh, well, these sins, you know, sex sins, that, that's really not against anyone. If you have it between two people in the privacy of their own abode or apartment or house or whatever, then that doesn't affect anyone else. Well, we're going to see, yes, it does. It affects the environment. It affects the weather. How can that be? Well, you read Jeremiah 23. Because of adultery and sex sins, there's drought. There's flood. We have any of that today? Verse 3. Therefore the land mourns, and everyone who dwells in it shall languish with the beast of the field, with the birds of heaven. Yea, the fish of the sea shall also be taken away. That's something? Just at a time they're telling us, oh, for good health, you better eat more fish. Verse 6. My people, God says, are destroyed for the lack of knowledge because you have rejected knowledge. And that's exactly what has happened. You look at any textbook in any school today. Have they rejected knowledge? Have they acknowledged God? No. Can't mention it. 
Oh, we'll talk about Allah. Oh, we'll talk about Buddha, but not God and Jesus Christ. Can't have that. No way. And even in some churches, can't have it. Because you have rejected knowledge. You reject God, guess what's going to happen to you? You think you can go out and sin with impunity? Guess what's going to happen to you? Just exactly like the criminal who thinks he can go around and shoot and kill and rob and beat and steal. When he's caught, he says, don't shoot. Don't shoot. That's the way it is with people today. Oh, well, why would God do that? Because you've rejected God and you are deciding for yourself, making yourself a God to decide what is good and evil rather than understanding what God says here. That's what's going to happen. When you decide good and evil, you reject God. When you go to the Word of God and say, Oh, Lord, tell me what is right and wrong. Begin with the Ten Commandments. That'll be a first start. Then study what Jesus said. That'll be building on top of that. God says here in Hosea 4.6, because you have rejected knowledge, I will also reject you. You want to be rejected of God? God says in the book of Jeremiah, that when the sins of the people reach a certain point to God, he said to Jeremiah, don't even pray for this people or lift up your voice to me for them, for I will not here. How close are we to that in this nation? We'll find out in this series we're doing on Obsessed with Sex. Since you have forgotten the law of your God, I will also forget your children. Has that happened to our children? Look at them. Forgotten. Rejected. Unwanted. That is, those who are still alive. How about all of those who have been aborted, killed, 55 million of them in the United States alone? And we say, oh God, why are these things coming upon us? And yet there's no repentance or strength of character to stand up and say, this will cease. I wonder what every woman who's had an abortion in the wee hours of the morning when they can't sleep and they lie there in bed thinking, because a woman can never, never, never separate herself from that child. Wonder what it would look like. Wonder what color hair it would have. Wonder what color of eyes it would have. Lay there and cry in loneliness and sorrow because you've committed murder of your own offspring within your own body. And you think God is not going to judge for that? Everybody stands up and says, Well, look what, look what Stalin did in killing all these people, and Mao Te Song did in killing all of these people, and, and Hitler did in killing all of these people. Did he not judge them? Have they not had war? Yes, they have. What do you think is going to happen to us? You think God's judgment is going to change? You think we will listen to all the things and problems that are coming along because of being obsessed with sex and whoredom and, and all of those things, adultery, fornication, homosexuality, bestiality, perversion, everything that we have? And we hold up the stars in Hollywood. Oh, wonderful, beautiful people. Look at their lives. Look at their sex lives. Look at what their children are like. Oh, yeah, there are one or two there that they have to kind of be, you know, closet conservatives. Verse 7, as they were increased, so they sinned against me. I will change their glory into shame. Isn't that what is happening now? Where's the glory of the United States of America? It's being changed, is it not? Into that which is shame. 
is it not? Yes, indeed. They eat up the sin of my people. They set their heart on their iniquity, not on God, not on truth, not on righteousness. No. And it has become like people, like priests. I will punish them for their ways and reward them for their doings. What are you doing? How do you view God? Is he in your life? Do you think on him? What is it? Whatever it is, be guaranteed, just as sure as the law of gravity is there, just as sure as the sun rises and sets, God is going to judge you in your lifetime for what you're doing. And we're going to read some statistics here in this program, or maybe in the next one, and it's going to blow your mind. Verse 10, for they shall eat and not have enough. Is that true? Fatter than ever, more malnourished than ever before. And that lies in the hands of those who produce the food, produce the grain, produce the products, genetically engineer it, and cause food to be given to people that they cannot have uh, proper assimilation of food. And you add on to that their own sins and their own immorality and their, the rottenness of their own lives altogether. And then they pass it down to their children. And the children are born. And they feed them not with mother's breast, as which God created them for. Oh, no. We've got to give them this formula made of soybean and all of these artificial things. And then we wonder why. Wonder why children have cancer. Wonder why children have diabetes. I wonder why they're fat. And then we have the president's wife, war on obesity. And she doesn't have a clue as to where it's starting or what is going to happen. But yes, let's control their lives. Listen, the truth is this. You control your life with the laws of God before God. God is holding you responsible. Don't look to a government to do it. You do it. Now, here's what happened. They shall commit whoredom, obsessed with sex, and not increase because of abortion. Outright murder of the most innocent of human life. Oh, well, we can't tell when human life begins. When do you think you began, you who are full grown? Huh? As soon as you were conceived. Are you glad that you are here? You willing to give up your life right now? Are you willing to go down to the abortion clinic and say, oh, kill me? Don't, don't take that life. Of course not. Well, what about the innocent victim? What about those who promote it? What about the government who gives $400 million a year to Planned Parenthood? Isn't that lovely? We'll help you. Sounds a little bit like Genesis 2 and 3, like we started out this series on, doesn't it? Yes, indeed. They shall commit whoredom and not increase because they have stopped taking heed to the Lord. Whoredom and wine and new wine take away the heart and add on to that marijuana and drugs illegal and prescription take away the heart can't take not proper emotions no human affections oh we got to have fun we got to have pleasures we got to have all these things that we do i got to be plugged in and hear my music having mainline satan music straight into your brain bam then we wonder why our young people hate us we wonder why they have no moral standards. They've been given over to all of this rotten music and rotten morals and rotten education and the lack of the teaching of the Word of God. And you yourselves as parents don't want to have the Word of God yourself, do you? Then we wonder, why are we being invaded with, with those coming through Arizona and then all of those airheads don't have enough sense to say, look, they're coming here as punishment from God. That's exactly what it is. The prophecy in the Old Testament says, and the stranger within you shall get high above you, and you shall be brought down very low, because you did not keep the commandments of God. Is that happening? 
Yes, indeed. And the president of Mexico comes here and condemns us in our face to try and protect our border. We don't know that the cause is all the abortions that we have committed. And who's the one that makes the final choice on it? The woman. We have 50 billion murderers. Don't we? Oh, you're being harsh. Well, don't you think it's kind of harsh to take a new life being developed in its mother's womb and scrape it out and tear it apart and sell remains of the body to the scientists so that they can find out how we can extend our lives with new miracle drugs? You think God is not going to judge for that? You better get your head screwed on right. You better get on your knees and start repenting of your sins. You better get your nose in the Bible. That's why church at home. You get home, you shut everything else out, and you take some time to study the Word of God and to pray to God. Confess your sins and repent and get your life right. That's why church at home. They won't preach this in the pulpits. But as long as there are the airwaves and the internet, and we still have freedom to do it, that's what's going to come from me. Now notice, verse 11, whoredom and wine and new wine take away the heart. That means you don't have the proper emotion. You don't have the proper feelings. You don't understand what is right and wrong. You can't make the judgments necessary to lead your own life. And you have to have the government tell you. And you have to have group think. And you have to have someone say, well, there's no really truth. It's what you decide. That's where we got where we are. And we're obsessed with sex and all of these other sins and crimes follow right along with it. Verse 12, my people seek advice from their wooden stocks and their rod declares to them for the spirit of whoredoms has caused them to go astray. Obsessed with sex. The Bible calls it the spirit of whoredoms. What's on your mind? What are you thinking about? Hmm? How about all of you who go on online pornography or when you're down at the store, you sneak around the corner there so no one's going to see you and you get your little pornography magazine. You start looking at it or you pick up Oprah's magazine and it says how to have auto sex for all women to be satisfied. Hmm? Are you going through the checkout stand? There's a magazine that says 40 ways to bring him pleasure. Am I exaggerating? Am I being too harsh and hard? For the spirit of whoredoms has caused you to go astray. They have gone a whoring away from under their God. They sacrifice on the tops of the mountains and burn incense upon the hills and under oaks and poplars and elms because its shade is good. So your daughters shall commit whoredom and your bride shall commit adultery. Is that not what is happening? Right here in the little town of Hollister, people got together and they were going to buy a house, community house. They were going to buy together. And they wanted to, but they had to get a permit for it. So they went to the city council and said, well, we all believe in wife swapping and we want to buy this house and have this as a safe haven for us. Well, at least the city council here said no. But that tells you, that tells you, doesn't it? The spirit of whoredoms. Look at how the men dress. Look at how the women dress. Look at our literature. Look at our TV. Look at our, our movies. Is it not all obsessed with sex? Do you think that these things will go unpunished? Do you think that God is way out there and he doesn't know what's going on? He knows exactly what's going on. Here's a promise. Verse 14. Will I not punish your daughters when they commit whoredom or your wives when they commit adultery? Of course he is. And that punishment comes immediately through lying, searing of the conscience, breaking the bond of marriage, ruining your life if you're not married so that you have so many partners that when you get married, you can't possibly be loyal to one man. Or a man who's had so many women, he cannot just possibly be satisfied with his wife. 
because he is burning in his lust and his, it's just in his makeup and his thoughts. And what's going to happen? How's your marriage? Hmm? How many times have you been divorced? How many children have you abandoned or murdered in the womb? Even the men themselves go aside with whores. They sacrifice with temple prostitutes. Well, they don't have temple prostitutes today, but in every town they have a section in town where you know that the prostitutes are walking back and forth. What are they there for? Hmm? Oh, and they have it in the schools too. Yes. Oh, the boys and girls in school know all of those things, don't they? And yes, they have a class where the teacher will teach them how to do it. And in many cases, even participate in the physical instruction of it for them. Isn't that wonderful? No wonder our generation is uneducated and stupid, because their minds are obsessed with sex and self and exploitation. Pull the plugs out. Get rid of the music. Get rid of those thoughts. Repent and get right with the Word of God. That's what God says. You know, another place it says, Israel, why will you die? We're dying. You look at this nation. Are we not dying? Yes. Why can't we solve our problems? The truth is this. You can never solve the problems of your life unless you go to the Word of God to find out what God says. And you can never solve the problems of your life unless you're willing to obey God. You go out and commit adultery, fornication, whoredom, You go out there, you were a young, nice girl or young, nice man, and you reach your teenage years, and now you're obsessed with sex. And that's all you have on your mind. And that's what you're taught in the school. And it's going to destroy you. And you don't even know it. God knows it. That's why he gave the laws. That's why he said, you shall not commit adultery. And in the next segment, we're going to see the different laws which come down from you shall not commit adultery. And then we're going to see the active judgment of God ongoing against people who do those things. No one is exempt. No one is going to fool God. God knows. But God is loving and kind and merciful. If you repent, you can't live in sin and get right with God. You have to cease sin and get right with God. That's what God wants. And look at the whole nation. We all sit there and watch the nightly news and wonder, what's going to happen? Why do we have this weather? Why do we have this problem? Why do we have this crime? Why do we have the invasion on our southern border with Mexico? Because we sinned against God. And the greatest sin is the murder of 50 to 55 million innocent lives. And God is going to replace that murder with 50 to 55 million foreigners to come in and take over this country. That's what's going to happen. And it's going to affect everyone. And we're going to see next time, no such thing as a sin that does not affect someone else. Well, this has been Fred Coulter on Church at Home. Let me encourage you, download as much material as you can from our website. Go to our other website, cbcg.org. We have messages, we have videos, we have transcripts, we have books. 
and you be sure and use those so you can learn, so you can grow, so you can rescue your life from the sins that are just collapsing in upon you, and God will help you. So once again, thank you for inviting me into your home, and this is Fred Colter saying, so long, everyone. 